Welcome back to VMworld 2013. This is our live coverage, SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante. Hi everybody, Doran Kempel is here. He's the founder and CEO of Simplivity, uh, an infrastructure specialist. I, Doran, I don't want to say converged infrastructure, because you guys do more than than just converged infrastructure, it's becoming sort of, you know, rote. But so we'll talk about that a little bit, but welcome back to theCUBE. We had you at uh, the Wikibon offices a couple weeks ago, so it's good to see you again. Thank you, Dave, thank you, John. So you guys have the, I think, the best booth out there because you have an Audi <laughs> that you're giving away. <laughs> give, give the folks a taste of what the vibe is in, the, in your booth down there. Well, great excitement. We are raffling an Audi R8. It's a beautiful car. It's important that it's an R8. And basically the scheme is, the more you learn about SimpliVity, the more you earn. Which means that your chances of winning the R8 increase as you participate in more of our events. If you participate in the presentation, you basically get one chance to uh, win. If you see a demo, another 10 or 15 options and so forth. So it's a nice car, and we think that it's symbolically high performance, very elegant design. We'd like to think that SimpliVity's OmniCube has similar features. Yeah, and Probabilities we, are pretty good though, right? I mean, it's very like good. I think that if you participate <laughs> in all the events of SimpliVity, you have about 50 chances to win. 50 out of probably 2,000, 5,000. So we love, we love your company because the OmniCube, not to be confused with the, with the Cube, Silicon Angles, we keep on the Cube, uh, is a great name. So, be good, good sponsorship opportunities for you know, us to work together. Uh, but no, seriously, you guys have a big, big pack booth. What's your core message uh, at the show here? And how are you reacting to all the conversations around agility, everyone's talking about hybrid cloud. It's going to take some technology to do that and performances. So talk about what you guys are doing here and how you guys tie into that key message of that of VMware. Sure, so SimpliVity's humble mission is to simplify IT. So the question is, what's to simplify? Well, if you step into a data center today, what you'll see is that the infrastructure stack is comprised of about eight or 12 different products, starting with servers, running virtualization, then a storage switch, then highly available storage, then potentially a dedupe to backup appliance, then probably a WAN optimization device, then potentially a cloud gateway, maybe SSD arrays, maybe SSD caching, a few software applications. Basically, Dave and John, you end up buying anywhere from eight to 12 different products from as many vendors, you train as many people to manage these products, and this creates clutter. So basically, IT is very complicated and expensive to manage. This is challenge number one. Challenge number two is that the data that we use today is a relic of the 20th, 20th century. Basically, it's bloated and is not meant for a virtualized, cloud-enabled world. The third problem is that people cannot manage their remote offices and data centers. We've addressed all of that as hard to believe as it is. What we do is we take all these 12 products and we assimilate them into a single product that we call the OmniCube. Secondly, with our unique data architecture, we deduplicate, compress, and optimize all the data at fine grain, 4 or 8K, once and forever, and we do that using the OmniCube Accelerator, which means that you actually enhance the performance of the system. How would you do that? First of all, we reduce the amount of IOPS to SSD and HDD, because we eliminate all the IOPS that are redundant. Secondarily, we sequentialize all the writes. So basically, you get a system that is high performance, and all the data is deduplicated, compressed, and optimized across all the tiers within an OmniCube, DRAM, SSD, HDD, and across all the phases of the life cycle of the data primary, backup, WAN, archive, and the cloud. Lastly, all of the OmniCubes anywhere in the world are managed by a single person, a VM admin from vCenter. So if you put all of that in scope, yes, it's hyper-converged, but there's also a new data architecture, and we offer this global federated architecture that allows one person to manage as many OmniCubes anywhere in the world. So the old days of IT, you had multi-vendor was the big trend. Back mm -hmm. going, go back 20 years ago even, that started that big trend. Oh, multi-vendor support open, still kind of closed, but now you have the mishmash. So is that what you're referring to in terms of all these different vendors? So it's a multi-vendor problem and a multi-technology problem kind of combined? Is that what you're solving? Basically, so the answer is yes. So if we think of the last 30 years in computing, basically we went from a world that is mainframe, fully integrated, which we liked, but centralized and closed. 
And over the course of the last 30 years, the pendulum has swung all the way to the left, and what we have now is clutter. If you want to establish your data infrastructure or your IT infrastructure, you need to buy all these products with all those management panes, and if you look at each one of those products, basically they have a lot of built-in resources that are islands. So basically, when your dedupe backup appliance is not doing dedupe, all those resources are not available to the rest of your applications. So we've changed all of that. All the capability is running on x86 resources globally. So we believe that this is new IT infrastructure. So good leverage, we believe, great me, leverage. Great leverage. Great leverage. And if you think about it, when we think about what Google and Amazon are doing, our assumption is, us being the people in the market, is that they're running on commodity x86 resources, so do we, that they've developed a very rich functionality stack that runs underneath virtualization, so do we, but above and beyond what they have done, the unique aspect of SimpliVity is our novel data architecture. All the data in real time on very fine grained basis is dedupe, compressed, and optimized once and forever. Nobody does that. And let me just point out something very important. So deduplication is part of our data efficiency play. When we think about companies that have been very efficient and successful, with just deduplication, names that come to mind are? Uh, data domain, obviously. Data domain and riverbed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do they go about that? Two very important characteristics. One, it was part of their original design. It's not an add-on. Secondly, they do it in line, real time. It's not a post-process. Now, we do much more than deduplication, and we don't just address the when or the backup. We address all the data, primary, backup, when, archive, cloud. But very importantly, we do everything as part of the original design, the OmniCube is built around this novel data architecture. Everything is in real time, but very importantly, it's accelerated. We use the OmniCube accelerator in order to increase your performance, and this is very unique. So as the OmniCubes are out there, one single plane of glass from a management standpoint, so the manageability becomes kind of a differentiator as well. Absolutely. Um, so that's awesome. So talk about some mm -hmm. of the customers, because you know, uh, that, and what's your experiences with, in, with your customer base? Because you kind of got to go in there and you're like, hey, I got the modern modern technology here, try it, so you got to kind of come in and get a beachhead, and then are they happy? Take us through the take us through a day in the life of that process. Great, so this is an excellent uh, question. We're very excited. We're very excited because on average, what we see in our deployments is a 3x TCO reduction. Let me say that again because it sounds a little unbelievable. 3x TCO reduction. Of course, it could be higher than that. We see that across a gamut of customers, starting with very small dentist offices, law firms, companies that basically use one or two Omnicubes in order to put all of their IT on these Omnicubes. Think about it as data center in a box. Go slightly larger than that, we have manufacturing customers, a city, um, a credit union bank, and what these companies do is they run on two Omnicubes in the central side and two additional Omnicubes in a remote side. So now they have disaster recovery across those uh, sites, and again, this is a concept whereby, whereby all of IT, all the application, are running on the Omnicube infrastructure. Move up a notch, very large companies that have 10, 20, 30, we're even in dialogue with a company that has 100 remote offices in the US. And the value proposition here is, again, significant reduction in complexity. This is very simple, but very importantly, a single person manages all those branch offices from vCenter. So this is scale out and branch office remote data center management. The largest, now I'm taking it one more step, are global cloud providers. So we've deployed in a company that you probably all know, T-Systems. T-Systems is part of Deutsche Telekom and they're in the process of building a very large public cloud, and they're going to be building it on OmniCube building blocks. And we're in dialogue with some other very promising telcos. So if you think about the deployment, all of them are very interested in this architecture, whereby basically we run on x86 resources, we simplify the uh, management, we offer all the functionality within these atomic IT building blocks instead of buying many different uh, product. So very exciting, and you asked me about the dialogue that we have with customers. So in the first uh, 30 seconds, people say, oh, you're like this or like that. And you're a dog, 30, you're a cat. No, exactly, you know, 30 seconds resource. after they understand that there is this novel data architecture, 
globally federated architecture, and in addition, we've converged the whole yeah. uh, stack. Very exciting. Yeah, I mean, so that's a hard. I mean, that that's something that you have to get over. I mean, people want to put you in a box. Mm -hmm. Well, you're like a you're like a cat or a dog. Right. Like, no, we're like a racehorse. I mean, so right. th th you have to get over that. Um, how long does that take? So I think that into the fifth minute of a conversation, mm -hmm. people understand what are the underlying technologies. There's still the aspect of disbelief. So people's first reaction is, like, okay, now I understand this is a completely different story, but it's impossible. How could one company, how could a startup, granted SimpliVity worked on it for three and a half years until you went GA, but how can one company offer all of that? And the good news is that we have reference customers, and the good news is we're happy to offer a POC. And it works. And it works, <laughs> that's a great point. I mean, that's, that's me job one. Yeah. yeah, that's always the key right now. Everyone, people think you're trying to sell way too much features mm -hmm. that you did for three years. Now, what's your take on the, um, the commoditization of the hypervisor, that conversation with, with, with apps and management moving up the stack? Is that a battleground, is that coopetition? How do you see the, that management layer moving up? Obviously, everyone's trying to move the stack, obviously, um, with yeah. Amazon and cloud, commoditization happens. A lot of hardened kind of layers now. So you got to move, people have to move up the stack. That's kind of the trend that we're seeing. What's your take on that? So our technology is hypervisor agnostic. However, we recognize the fact and we've made a choice to be part of the VMware infrastructure. And clearly, as uh, Isaac Newton said, we stand on the shoulders of giants. And one of those giants is, of course, VMware. But we're virtualization uh, agnostic. And if customers want us to deploy under other virtualization options, uh, that's possible. So, Dorn, last year you guys had, you know, you sort of introduced SimpliVity to the world at this event. Now you've, you've, you've given away the best swag at the show. What should we look for next year, 12 months now? What, what should observers look for in terms of progress in this, not only this business, but specifically SimpliVity? So a lot of the customers are asking us for additional features, uh, new form factors. We just released two more form factors. We used to sell just the CN3000. Mm -hmm which offers 12 cores, 20 to 40 terabytes. Now there's a CN3000 with 24 cores, same amount of storage. There's a CN2000, which is smaller, half the cores, half the storage. And there's a CN5000, which is a juiced up uh, version with twice as many drives and more SSD. So as we speak with very large customers, they say to us, what about giving me an Omnicube that I can run my SAP environment on? What about an Omnicube or a few Omnicubes for my Hadoop environment? What about an Omnicube specially for VDI? So what we're doing is we're starting to focus on some of those vertical environments that customers want, but note that today we offer Omnicubes for all of the applications that run on a data center. So that's one thing that people should uh, look for. Secondly, is the massive scalability that is inherent to our architecture still needs to be qualified in the lab. So today, if we promise a customer 20, 30, 40 nodes, we need to qualify in the lab. And by the way, just last week, we had a third party test 40 nodes, 40 CN3000 nodes, delivering 1.2 million IOPS. So the fact that the underlying technology is there doesn't mean that we can just ship it, we need to qualify. And last time that you and I spoke, I referenced a project that we call 512 by 64. 512 nodes across 64 sites that we're in the process of qualifying. And what I shared with you is that the reason we're going after those numbers is that we have a customer that needs that much at that point in time. Well, there's now another customer that has eclipsed that amount, so we now need to qualify it's a more spectrum systems. from dentist office to It is a massive, to and by it's a significant uh, right. execution challenge for us just right. to get all these systems in the lab and testing mm -hmm. them. So. Back to your question, there are going to be more features, more form factors, and we're going to be qualifying larger and larger federations. Awesome. Doran, well thanks for coming by theCUBE, really appreciate it, great to hear from you. Congratulations on your success, and uh, uh, we're um, hope, hopeful the raffle will kind of come our way. I'm sure uh, we're going to have to step out of the recuse ourselves from being getting the, getting the, uh, the now if we win, we, we can't accept the card day, because now yeah. I think you that we You can accept know. it, we'll make it work <laughs> for you. <laughs> great booth, congratulations, great to meet you. John, um, thank you very much. Hot Dave, startup. Great to see you again. This is thank the future, you. this is about the modern infrastructure, these guys have it. This is theCUBE, we're getting all the signal from the noise here at VMworld 2013. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. Stay with us, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.